All right, what's up? Just doing a video here for you for today over 12.2. So hopefully you won't get too confused over what we did yesterday with the drawings and stuff. That's just kind of a one-off. If you know how to kind of do a little bit of what we were doing yesterday, you're gonna be fine, but you're gonna see that today we really don't even need any of that information so it's kind of a one-off in that sense so today we're going to be talking about um, surface area of prisms and so we'll get right into it here if you go in your book to page 686 you will be where we're supposed to be and i'll show you what we're doing with the ipad here okay so you can see that the ipad here we're talking about prisms, right? So prisms have some unique characteristics. In fact, we're gonna talk about prisms in have, having five characteristics. So let's write those down. The first characteristics of a prism is that the bases of the prism are congruent. So in the, two, in the two examples you see right there, we have a rectangular prism on the left and a triangular prism on the right. Now, which two faces of this prism are congruent on the left? You have this one here on the side, that would be the same as the one on the other side. You also have, you could have the, um, you could have this side and this side over here. That could be also considered two congruent faces. And you can even have the top and the bottom be considered. So that one actually has several options for what we would consider to be bases. But if you look at my triangular prism, there's really only two sides that can be considered a base because there's only two sides that are the same, this top, the bottom one and the top one, the two triangles basically. So you can see that no other of the sides are really the same. So the bases in the triangular prism are kind of obvious. On the one on the left, there could be several different ones. But anyway, so if we're talking about a base, we're talking about things being the same in a prism. Um, the second characteristic is faces that are not bases are lateral faces. And I would kind of count that like saying lateral. How do I mean that? It's the sides of the prism, right? And when we talk about somebody like Tanner who has really good lateral quickness, he, that means he can move side to side really fast. So when we say lateral faces, those are the, that's the, the stuff on the sides. So if you think of that triangular prism on the right there and you see that the bases are on the top and the bottom, the lateral faces would be the stuff that makes up the sides, the stuff on the around the bases, okay? It would be, it would be this, the one in the back, and then this one out here, those sides, okay? So if it's not a base, it's a lateral face. The third thing is that lateral faces intersect at lateral edges. Lateral faces connect at lateral edges. Okay, so that just means that these sides right here connect at these edges. And you can see what we're talking about there. So those are lateral edges there. Okay, the fourth thing would be if, it, if I have a segment that's perpendicular to a base, so I'll draw it in here, that's not a very good one, we'll do it again. So if I have 
something that's perpendicular to a base, we would call that an altitude. So segment perpendicular to a base is an altitude. And we kind of think of that like we've already talked about altitudes and triangles. It's kind of the same idea. It's just measuring the height of the prism, right? So then the last one is we would call these things a right prism. We would call these things a right prism if one of the lateral edges was also an altitude. So you can see in my figure up here that this edge, this lateral edge, is also an altitude because it is perpendicular to the base. So that would be a right triangular prism. So a right prism, not also, but let's say has a lateral edge as an altitude. Okay, so those are the five things that we need to know about a prism. One, the bases are congruent. So if ever I'm trying to figure out what the two bases are, then I just need to look for the two sides that are the same. And the one on the left, that one's, that can kind of be a little tricky because you have three options that could be bases. But as we go along, you'll see it doesn't really make that big of a difference. On the right, it's pretty clear. That the two triangles are really the only two sides that are the same, the two faces that are the same. So those would be considered the bases. So all the other faces of these prisms that are not bases are called lateral faces, the sides of the prism. And then lateral faces connect at lateral edges. Segments perpendicular to a base are, is called an altitude. And then if an altitude is also a lateral edge, then it's a right prism. So those are my five characteristics of a prism. All right, moving on. Now we're gonna be asked to find what is the area come back up here. What is the area of the lateral sides? That's going to be asked to find the area of the three faces that make up those sides. So let's turn to page 688 and look at number one. This is number one on 688. I have here something that looks kind of like this. Let's do that one again. Okay. So I've got kind of a rectangular prism and they give me some measurements. They tell me that this side is 15, this side is eight, and this side is 21. And we're gonna try to find the lateral area of this prism. Well, we gotta determine which are the bases. So which two sides are obviously the same? It's the two triangles, right? Those three, those three squares or rectangles on the sides, the, the back one is definitely bigger because the hypotenuse is bigger than you know, the, the other sides. And so you can just tell it's not, it's not a base. So the two bases are the two triangles. So now I'm gonna to try to find the, the, the area of the lateral faces. So I'm trying to find the area of this, the area of this side, and the area of that back side back behind there. All right, so how would I do that? Well, we can just take it as three separate shapes and find the area of those three shapes, right? So let's take this front side right here. Let's try to find the area of that. Well, that's just a square or a rectangle, so it's just eight times 21, which is 168 right? So I've got the area of that front side, 168. Let's write that in there in red. Okay, so that the area of that front one is 168. So now I need to find the area of like this rectangle back here. So what is the measurements of that? It's got a 21 there and a 15 there. So 15 times 21, that is do it on the calculator, make sure we don't make a mistake. 15 times 21, that's 315. All right, 315 is the area of that one side. Okay, now let's find the area of the, the back face there. This up there is 21. Oops, what's that distance along the back back there? 
that's the same as this distance on the top right there. Well, I don't have that, but I do see that it is a right triangle. And so I could just use Pythagorean theorem here to figure out what that extra side was. So let's do 15 squared plus 64, 15 squared plus eight squared, which is 64, and we get 289. So 289 is equal to that side square. Let's take the square root of that, and I get 17. All right, so C is equal to 17. This side is 17. So then the area of that back face is just gonna be 21 times 17. So let's do that, 21 times 17, 357. So I've got the area of those three faces. I can just add them together, 357, 315, 168, 15 plus 168, and I get 840 inches squared. Okay, now man, that seemed like that took a long time. Let's see if I can think of this in a different way that might save us some time because there is a way to do this faster. <coughs> what is the common number in all of these faces that I found the area of? 21, right? 21, the height is the same in all of those faces. Now, what are, what are these other numbers representing? This eight, this 15, and this 17. Well, isn't that just the perimeter of the base? 15, 17, and eight, see it? The perimeter right there. So what would happen if I just took the perimeter and multiplied it by the height of this prism? That would give me the same thing, I think. So let's do the perimeter of the, the base, which is 15 plus 17 plus 8, which that's 32 plus 8 is 40. Let's multiply that by the height and see, oops, 40 times 21, I get 840. Well, that is the same answer I got before. So let's say then it's safe to say that if I'm trying to find the lateral area, you know, the area of the sides, I could just take the perimeter and multiply it by the height. So if I'm ever asked to find the lateral area, let's just do the perimeter of the base and then times it by the height, that probably will save me some time. All right, so let's do another one. Let's do it that quick way first. Let's do, go to number two. I have a rectangular prism. So I'll try to draw it as best I can like they have it, which I won't be able to do exactly, but you'll be able to get the point. That side went a little wonky on us. Okay, <clears throat> so I have, Six, seven, and nine. Six, seven, and nine. All right, so which are the bases? Let's find the perimeter of the base. Well, <clears throat> which two sides are the same? Well, I could have, let's see, this side and the top and bottoms are the same, but the sides, this side and this side are also the same, so those could be the bases. And this side and the back side are also the same. So those could be the bases. Well, I don't know. I guess you get to choose then to whatever you want to do. Let's see what we can figure out. Or in actually in this problem, <clears throat> let's just say that the base is the side it's sitting on, the bottom. So let's find the perimeter of the bottom. So the perimeter of the bottom is going to be 7 plus 9 plus 7 plus 9. So that's 18 plus 14 and that's 32. What's the height? If I'm thinking of this prism of the base being the thing on the bottom, the height would be six. So 32 times six, 192. And so I would have, and it's centimeters squared. So if I took the bottom and the top and said that was the base, then the lateral area would be 192. I think I'm gonna to have to do this again because I have other options of bases. So let's think of this side as being a base with this side, since those are also the same, and let's figure out 
what the lateral area would be if those were the bases. And I was thinking of, you know, the orange parts that wrapped around those bases as being the lateral area or the sides. So let's do that. Let's figure it this way. Okay, well, the perimeter of those bases would be six plus six plus seven plus seven, so 12 plus 14. Oops, not 114, but 14, that's 26. So the perimeter of that base is, would be 26. What's the height? If I set it up there, the height would be nine. So 26 times nine is 234, whoops, 234 centimeters squared. So if I took the blue sides and counted those as the bases, then I would have a lateral area of 234. I think I'm gonna have to do it one more time because I could have, I could think of this as this being a base along with the back being the base. So I'm gonna have to find the perimeter of those things. So the perimeter of that would be nine plus six plus nine plus six, so 12 plus 18. That would be 30. In that case, the height would be seven. So 30 times seven is 210. So I actually have three answers to this one. I have, depending on which I consider to be the bases, I have one answer could be 192, one answer 234, and the other 210. So you would need to do it three different times if you had a rectangular prism that had the potential to have what we could consider to be three different sets of bases. Okay, moving on, let's think of this, these figures now and try to find the total surface area. So let's say that I had a box that looked like this. And I'll try to draw it in there like that. And it had a height of 15, 10, and 11. Okay. And I'm going to find the, the total surface area. Now, what I was just doing prior to this is I was finding the lateral surface area, like the surface area of the four faces that are on the sides. And I didn't include the bases. So now we're going to try to include the bases. Well, that's pretty simple, it seems like. If I took the lateral area, which I already know how to do, which we just did, and just added what the area of the two bases is, then I would have the total surface area. So let's look at this box. Let's find this, the lateral area of the four faces around the sides of this, okay? So let's find the perimeter of the base, which is 10 plus 10 plus 11 plus 11. So 20 plus 22. And if I did that, I would get 42. Oops, not 14, 42 times it by the height. So 42 times 15. And I'd get 630. Okay, that gives me the lateral area the area of the four sides. Now let's find the area of the base. Well, that's pretty simple. That's just 10 times 11, which is 110. So if I take that and I do add it 110 to that, that would give me, oops, not 100, 110. That would give me the area of almost the whole figure, but I have two bases, so I gotta do that again. And one of these days I'll enter it correctly. 110 plus 110 plus 630, and I get 850. So the surface area of this figure is 850 units squared. All right. So, I mean, I added the two bases together. Of course, you could obviously just multiply one base times two and get the same answer. That's the quicker way, but however you want to do it is fine. Um, now you're saying probably, well, what if I would have done it with one of the other faces 
as the basis. You're gonna get the same answer because we're talking about total surface area here now, not just the lateral surface area. So it's not gonna change the final answer. It's just gonna look a little different on how we got there. Okay, so that's so, so the surface area of this box would be 850 units squared, square units. Let's do one more. Let's do number four on page 688. So number four, we have a right triangular prism like this. And looks like kind of like that. Don't judge me on my drawings. Okay, what are we got? Uh, height here is eight, <clears throat> base is six, this length is 12. All right, so let's find the perimeter of the base. Well, first we need to identify which are the bases. Which two sides are the same? Well, it's gotta be this front triangle and this back triangle back here. Those are the two, only two faces that are congruent, that are the same, so those have to be the bases. So let's find the perimeter of one of these bases. Let's find the distance around this triangle. All right, well, I've got two sides there, eight and six, I don't know what the third side is but I could easily find it by just doing Pythagorean theorem. I get 64 plus 36 equals C squared, that's 100. And so the third side is obviously 10. Let's write that in. So the perimeter then of the base is 18 plus six, that is 24. So the perimeter of that is 24. Let's multiply that to find the lateral area. Let's take that and say it's 24 times the height, which is 12. 24 times 12, 288. So the lateral area of this figure is gonna be 288. Now, I just need to find the area of the two bases and I'll be golden, I'll add it to my 288 and we'll be, we will call it good, okay? So the, Area of one base is a triangle, so that formula is one half the base times the height. So the base times the height in this case is 48, half of that is 24. So I have my 288, and I have two of those 24s, one for each base. So I'll take 48 and add it to 288, and I will get 336. So my surface area is 336 square units. All right, now you should be good for this thing, except, um, oh no, I think we're gonna be good because we're not gonna do with cylinders or cones. We're gonna talk about that later. So that's pretty much it. I hope you got that. If you have any questions, you can always ask me, no problem. Have fun, we will talk to you tomorrow. See ya.